it's Rena Olson with Ubor at TZ. Today we have our business pillar unit to share more about the volunteer opportunities available through Ubora TZ. So if you have a business background, you have a heart for mentoring, you will want to definitely check out more from Lee Williams. If you could just introduce yourself and tell us what you do with Ubora. Well, hey, I'm Lee Williams and I am responsible for the business pillar of Ubora. I've been in that role for a few years. My wife has been going to Tanzania for many, many years. I've been about three times so far, but I'm privileged to work with a team of several individuals who are excited about helping uh, make business a part of uh, impacting the kingdom in Karansi and Siha district. Cool. So tell us some of the ways you go about doing that, Lee. We have a lot of different programs. Uh, I'll give you a few examples. Uh, first off is this year we created a mentoring program for graduates uh, from college and university level because one of the challenges is that they graduated but they are still looking for work uh, or they're trying to start a business. And so we've created this mentoring program so we can match uh, Americans from over here who have some, some level of business skills or simply the desire to build a relationship and be a friend and be a help to these young people uh, with graduates over there who are looking for advice and coaching and mentoring. And you're using like Zoom technology for those meetings, is that? That's right, that's right, whatever works. Uh, so we have three partners, three mentoring relationships established so far. And so far we're finding that WhatsApp works in some cases, Zoom works in other cases, email certainly works. Uh, the students over there, I should say the graduates over there do have access to Wi-Fi at our campus over there. And so there is the ability to, uh, to connect with them over one technology or the other. Uh, the only challenge is the time zone. So typically, typically you'll, you'll meet with them in the early morning hours over here which is middle of the afternoon for them over there. Yeah, very cool. And what kind of time commitment would you need from a volunteer who might want to be a mentor? Great question. What we say is we'd like them to make contact with their mentee at least once a month in, in one fashion or another. So it's not a big time commitment. We hope that they'll do more than that. We think that they will once they get into the relationship, but we're asking for a commitment of, of one contact per month with their mentee. That's very, very cool. And I know those, those young people over there just appreciate it so, so much to, to have that, that touch from America. It's an exciting opportunity for someone from here to have an impact over there without even going and without much of a time commitment. Yeah, love that, love that. Well, tell us what, what else you've got going on. Well, uh, another area that we're really just ramping up on in a bigger way is agriculture. Um, farming is the number one way that most people in the area over there make a living for their families. And it's not an area we've had much opportunity to influence because frankly, we didn't have the right skill sets over here to be of much help. Um, but we've recently had two new volunteers come along who one is an active farmer, one of them grew up on a pig farm. And I'm just excited to see what we can do with some new expertise coming alongside our partners over there, helping them develop programs to provide education on best practices to local small farmers, as well as helping our own pig farm, which is a part of Shefo, to operate better, to find a better market, uh, and to be a more sustainable business on its own. Very cool, very cool. Uh, what other things do you have in the works to help graduates and really to help kind of build that economy. I know you've done a lot of things in the past. Share with, share with us some of those examples. Well, one thing that we're excited about that's coming up in the next few months is that we are planning to take a group of graduates to what's called Killy Fair. And Killy Fair is the largest tourism trade show in Tanzania. And tourism is a huge industry in the economy over there. Uh, it, it involves a lot of local as well as national companies. There's a, there's a strong uh, priority for English speakers to work in that industry. And all of our graduates, they speak English. They were, they were raised in an English medium school. Um, 
And so we're planning to take a group of them to this trade show simply to expose them to the business world. We plan to do some Zoom training prior to the event on how to prepare a resume, how to prepare and deliver an elevator pitch, or simply to, to, to prepare them for what a trade show is like. Uh, we might take them on a virtual tour of some trade shows that some of us have been to. So we're just sharing our experience with them, helping to prepare them so that when they go, they have an opportunity to learn a lot about that industry and to practice presenting themselves uh, professionally and networking with others in that setting and hopefully uncover some employment opportunities. And I know you are real anxious for travel and mission trips to resume. So sometime in the future, we will be traveling back to Tanzania um, to, to be there in person for these mission trips. So if you could explain what some of the things you do on a business-related mission trip. Yeah, great question. I appreciate that. And we are looking forward to getting back over there. Uh, one of the, a couple of things that we would do on a mission trip is to develop and provide some training. Uh, we did this a couple of times before COVID. Uh, we did about three or four classes to roughly 20 business owners at a time. There are roughly 160 shops or other small businesses in the village of Karansi. And so we think we've touched almost half of them through this very uh, introductory bookkeeping course that several of our teams delivered in the fall of 2019. Uh, and, and we found that to be very impactful. Uh, we did have some people over there back in the fall, this past fall, and they talked to some of the students who, who have proudly held up their, their ledgers and talked about how the record keeping process, the discipline of that has helped them to be more profitable in their businesses. So that's something we'll definitely start again when we, when we do trips is uh, develop and deliver training in person uh, to the village business owners. Uh, one of the other things that we would typically do is usually in the afternoons after we've taught in the morning, we'll go out and, and call on the students that are coming to this class in their place of business and we'll have them tell us about their business and we'll do what I call informal consulting. We'll offer them some ideas some suggestions. We'll document those ideas so that we can follow up with them or someone else can follow up on them on a future trip. Uh, so that would be another aspect of a typical trip is just going out and consulting with village business owners. Uh, I think we'll, we'll also do mentoring face to face with the graduates when we're there again. And there's a growing interest in starting businesses over there. So on some of these trips, we may have some, some of you may want to go and explore what it would be like to, uh, to invest uh, and to start a business that would employ people in that economy which would be very exciting. Yes, yes. And that, that's really the whole, the whole purpose of Ubora. It's, we don't wanna be there for the long term, right? right. The, 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 whole, the, whole, um, the whole thing is really to come alongside them, you know, to really help them understand, to get stronger, to share our knowledge and um, so that they can have a, I mean, just the progress we've made in 18 years has been, has been tremendous. I'm sure you've seen quite a change already. Right. And, and, and one of the blessings of COVID, not a phrase you hear often, but one of the blessings of COVID is it has forced us to think, how can we help without being there? Uh, which is our ultimate goal anyway. And so the mentoring program was born out of that idea. Uh, we're also, the, the Killy Fair project, we probably won't be able to go and be there with them, but we're going to help train and prepare, and then our partners over there will, will, will take them and, and walk with them through that experience. Uh, but we're also currently working on how we can do training for the village business uh, owners from here as well. And so that's one thing. We can be thankful for technologies like Zoom because it allows us to do things like this. Yeah. So, Lee, what kind of volunteers um, do you need to help you on, on your work on the business pillar? So, uh, really, just about anybody who, who's involved in business. You can be an entry-level person right out of college with a, with a business degree or a communications degree uh, or a business owner, you know, with employees of your own. 
uh, in, anyone with a business mindset and who's, who recognizes that business can be a form of ministry uh, is welcome to join us. And, and, and I would also say, you know, if you have basic uh, computer skills, you know, Microsoft Office, Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, you can help teach a graduate over there who, who has access to a computer, and, and some do, uh, to, to use those tools and to be more effective in, in what they do. So just about anybody out there who touches business in any way could be helpful in the business ministry. Well, you are such a blessing to many. If people are interested, what's the best way to get in touch with you? The best way would be to email me. My email address is lhwilliamsjr at gmail.com. Excellent. Well, thank you, Lee. It's been a pleasure talking to you and learning more about the great work of the business pillar of Ubora. Thank you, Rena. Keep up the great work. All right.